good morning all of you today my topic is anesthesia considerations in patients on anticoagulants introduction patients who present for surgery while taking anticoagulants facing significant anesthetic challenges related to underlying conditions that requires a careful assessment of of the risks of uh, thromboembolism and excessive bleeding perioperative management of anticoagulant therapy with primary aim being a balance between reducing the risk of uh, systemic arterial and venous embolism reducing perioperative bleeding risk common reasons for anticoagulation congestive heart failure left ventricular systolic dysfunction hypertension bp greater than 140 by 90 or treated hypertension on medication age 75 years diabetes mellitus stroke or transient ischemic attack in history vascular disease peripheral vascular disease myocardial infarction aortic plaque patients must needed prolonged anticoagulant therapy patients with prostatic heart valves patients with intravascular stents atrial fibrillation with rheumatic valvular disease history of venous thromboembolism drugs used for anticoagulation unfractionated heparin heparin binds to antithrombin inactivating factor 2a and 10a blocking the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin Factor 10A is rate limiting step for acceleration of uh, the coagulation cascade to thrombin activation. Low molecular weight heparins, anaxaparin, daltiparin. Low molecular weight heparins potentiate the action of antithrombin 3 indirectly, inversibly inactivating factor 10A. Warfarin. Warfarin competitively inhibits the vitamin K epoxide reductase complex 1, reducing the synthesis of coagulation factors. 2, 7, 9, and 10, as well as the coagulation regulatory factors protein C and S. Duration of action onset is 8 to 12 hours with a peak at 36 to 72 hours. Direct acting uh, oral anticoagulants Revaroxaban, Epixaban, Edoxaban, Bitrexaban bind directly to factor 10A and factor 2 without complexing to antithrombin. The direct inhibitor of factor 2A, Dabigatron inhibits the formation of fibrin from fibrinogen. Fundaparinox is an indirect uh, factor 10A inhibitor binding reversibly to antithrombin. Antiplatelet agents. Aspirin. This irreversible cyclooxygenase 1 and 2 inhibitor prevents the formation of prostaglandin A2, a potent vasodilator and inducer of platelet aggregation. Duration of action is irreversible effect on platelets. The effect will last for the life of the platelet, 7 to 10 days. NCRs. NCRs inhibit cyclooxygenase by decreasing tissue prostaglandin synthesis. Duration of action is reversible, may ranging from 1 hour to 3 days. Antiplatelet agents, thenopyridines and non-thenopyridines. Clopidogrel, ticlopidine, prasugrel inhibit the P2Y12 receptor on platelets, which promotes the stabilization of platelet clots through fibrinogen bonds. The non thenopyridines tecagrelar and congrelar cause reversible non competitive P2Y12 receptor aggregation inhibition. Duration of action is irreversible effect on platelet function for the life of the platelet. Glycoprotein 2B, 3A inhibitors. Abscissimab, eptifibatid, and tirofiban are the only available in intravenous form and used to reduce ischemic cardiac events in combination with heparin and in combination with tissue plasminogen activator in acute ischemic strokes. Time to normal platelet aggregation for abscissimab is 24 to 48 hours. Eptifibatate and tirofiban normal platelet function should occur in 4 to 8 hours. Perioperative management of patients on anticoagulants. Unfractionated heparin. Heparin should be discontinued 6 hours prior to the surgery and APTT should be checked. Heparin should be restarted 6 to 12 hours postoperatively. Warfarin, bridging therapy, refers to the perioperative substitution of warfarin for a low molecular weight heparin to limit the time that subtherapeutic anticoagulation occurs. Discontinue warfarin 5 days prior to the surgery when INR less than 1.5. Start low molecular weight heparin at therapeutic doses. Surgery can proceed when the INR below 1.5. Low molecular weight heparin. Discontinue low molecular weight heparin 24 hours prior to the surgery. Postoperatively restart low molecular weight heparin 24 hours after surgery. If there is a high risk of bleeding, 
restart low molecular weight heparin 48 to 72 hours after surgery. Stop low molecular weight heparin when the INR goes beyond 2. For epidural catheter insertion and removal, before catheter insertion, withhold low molecular weight heparin dose 24 hours prior to the surgery. While epidural catheter is in place, administer low molecular weight heparin dose 12 hours after insertion. Prior to the catheter removal, withhold low molecular weight heparin dose for 24 hours. After catheter removal, recommends after 4 hours. Fundaparinox, it has a longer half-life, 17 hours than heparin and does not interfere with platelet function. If patient receives fundaparinox at a prophylactic dose 2.5 mg per day, it should be stopped 36 to 42 hours before any neuroaxial procedure and might be resumed 6 to 12 hours post procedure. Direct acting oral anticoagulants, bridging therapy is generally not required for patient taking direct acting oral anticoagulants, Revaroxaban, Epixaban, Edoxaban, Betrexaban and Dabigatron should be stopped 24 hours prior to the neuroaxial procedure and restarted after 24 hours in patients with low bleeding risks and after 48 to 72 hours in those with a high bleeding risk. If risk of embolism is high, consider using low molecular weight heparin prophylactically postoperatively. Antiplatelet agents, patients on antiplatelet drugs do not require perioperative bridging and all antiplatelet drugs are contraindicated while epidural catheter in place. Aspirin should be stopped 5 days prior to the neuroaxial procedure, resumed after 2 hours after neuroaxial procedure. Clopidogrel should be stopped 7 days before neuroaxial procedure, resumed after 2 hours neuroaxial procedure. Prasugrel should be stopped 10 days before neuroaxial procedure, resumed 6 hours after neuroaxial procedure. Ticlopidin must be stopped 4 days before neuroaxial procedure and resumed 8 hours after neuroaxial procedure. Ticagrelar must be stopped 5 days before neuroaxial procedure and resumed 6 hours after neuroaxial procedure. Congrelar must be stopped 3 hours before neuroaxial procedure and resumed 8 hours after neuroaxial procedure. Abscissi map should be stopped 48 hours before neuroaxial procedure, resumed 2 hours after neuroaxial procedure. Epifibatide and tirofiban should be stopped 8 hours before neuroaxial procedure and resumed 2 hours after neuroaxial procedure. NCRs have no time restrictions for doing neuroaxial procedure and epidural catheter placement. Thrombolytic agents. Altipase tissue plasminogen activator should be stopped 10 days before neuroaxial procedure. Resumed 10 days after neuroaxial procedure. Altipase was contraindicated while epidural catheter in place. Ayurvedic medicine and homeopathic medicine and dietary supplements associated with increased risk of bleeding. Ayurvedic medicine and homeopathic medicine are alternative practices of healing based on the pharmacologically active components of plants and their extract products. Because the popular medicinal options contain natural characteristics, most consumers perceive them to be safe. However, there is a strong evidence of bleeding risk associated with these remedies in the perioperative population. The risk of perioperative morbidity and mortality is increased because of the intrinsic properties of these supplements and the drug interactions that can occur. The intake of certain supplements can have devastating effects on patient outcomes. Ayurvedic medicine and herbal extracts, garlic, the first one is garlic. Condition treated are hypertension, hypercholesteremia, fungal infections, cancer, MI prevention, ETC. It mainly affects platelet aggregation inhibition. Preoperative recommendations. Discontinue 7 days preoperatively. Resume 7 days postoperatively. Ginger. Conditions treated are nausea, vomiting, GI bloating, dyspepsia, osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, migraine, weight loss, ETC. It affects platelet aggregation inhibition. Preoperative recommendations. Discontinue 2 to 3 weeks preoperatively. Resume 2 weeks postoperatively. Ginseng. Nausea. Dyspepsia, cancer prevention, coronary artery disease, diabetes mellitus, colic, infections, aging, stress, ETC. It mainly affects on platelet aggregation and anticoagulation. A case report of postmenopausal bleeding was noted. Preoperative recommendations. Discontinue 7 days preoperatively. 
resume two weeks post operatively jingo biloba maiden hair tree circulatory stimulant it used as circulatory stimulant dementia alzheimer's disease multi infarct memory enhancement peripheral vascular disease erectile dysfunction etc a case report of post laparoscopic cholecystectomy bleeding was noted perioperative recommendations discontinue 36 hours or more preoperatively resume 7 days post operatively oil of wintergreen methyl salicylate osteoarthritis joint discomfort hypertension inflammation a case series of bruising gastrointestinal bleeding elevated inr from drug interaction with warfarin perioperative recommendations oil of wintergreen discontinue 2 to 3 weeks preoperatively resume 2 weeks post operatively red chili pepper capsicin it used as analgesic chronic neuropathy osteoarthritis uremic pruritus psoriasis etc it causes reduced clotting factor 8c activity and also it causes inhibited platelet aggregation but not blood coagulation perioperative recommendations of red chili pepper discontinue 2 to 3 weeks preoperatively and resume 2 weeks post operatively herbal formulas Cajun Caru, Chinese medicine. It is used for hypertension, arteriosclerosis, memory impairment, headache, etc. It inhibits platelet aggregation in animal study. Perioperative recommendations for Cajun Caru discontinue two to three weeks preoperatively, resume two weeks postoperatively. Back foam pill, Chinese medicine, used for uh, GA disturbances, cardiovascular disturbances, gynecological dysfunction. It inhibits platelet aggregation and anticoagulant. Perioperative recommendations for back foam pill discontinue two to three weeks preoperatively. Resume two weeks post operatively. Herbal teas. Tea gastronol. It uh, used for uh, GI ulcers, intestinal inflammation, colitis, gastritis, flatulence. A case report of GI bleeding was noted. Perioperative recommendations for tea gastronol. Discontinue two to three weeks preoperatively. Resume two weeks post operatively. Homeopathic medicine. Arnica, Montana, Leopard's Bane or Wolf's Bane. It is used for osteoarthritis, sprains, joint pain, inflammation. It constitutes an inhibited platelet function. Perioperative recommendations for Arnica, Montana. Discontinue 2 to 3 weeks preoperatively. Resume 2 weeks postoperatively. Dietary supplements. Fish oil. Ecosa pentanoic acid. Fish oil is used for uh, hypertension, hyper uh, triglyceride media, reptile arthritis, angina pectoris, atherosclerosis. Reduced platelet aggregation was noted in human controlled trial. Perioperative recommendations for fish oil. Discontinue 2 to 3 weeks preoperatively. Resume 2 weeks postoperatively. Glucosamine. It mainly used in osteoarthritis. Increased INR with concomitant warfarin was seen in, in a case report and literature review. Perioperative recommendations for glucosamine discontinue two to three weeks preoperatively, resume two weeks postoperatively. Dietary supplements, vitamin E, bladder cancer prevention, rheumatoid arthritis, Alzheimer's disease, premenstrual syndrome, moment disorders. A case series of bleeding diagnosis, prolonged PT and APTT seen. Perioperative recommendations for vitamin E discontinue two to three weeks preoperatively, resume two weeks postoperatively. Thank you. I am Sincerely, thank you for your support. Sincerely, advise you all. Please, proper uh, history from the patient. Uh, whether patient is on Ayurvedic medicine or uh, dietary supplements or any herbal formulas or any homeopathic medicine, we should check and during preoperative evaluation. Thank you.